as you mentioned, modular is very new. Mojo is very new. It's a relatively small team. Yeah. That's building up this yeah, just gigantic just stack, yeah. this incredible stack that's going to perhaps define the future of development of our AI overlords. Uh, <laughs> we just hope it will be useful. <laughs> <laughs> As do all of us. Uh, yeah. So what uh, what have you learned from this process of building up a team? Maybe one question is, how do you hire yeah, great I mean, programmers, great the people that operate in this compiler, hardware, machine learning, software, interface design space. Yeah. And maybe are a little yeah. bit fluid in yeah. what they can do. So, okay. So, language design too. So, building a company is just as interesting in different ways as building a language. Mm -hmm. Like different skill sets, different things, but super interesting. And I've built a lot of teams in a lot of different places. Um, if you zoom in from the big problem into recruiting, well, so here's our problem. Okay. I'll, I'll just, I'll be very straightforward about this. We started modular with a lot of conviction about, we understand the problems, we understand the customer pain points. We need to work backwards from the suffering in the industry. And if we solve those problems, we think it'll be useful for people. But the problem is, is that the people we need to hire, as you say, are all these super specialized people that have jobs at big tech, big tech worlds, right? And, you know, we, I don't think we have um, product market fit in the way that a normal startup does, or we don't have product market fit challenges because right now everybody's using AI and so many of them are suffering and they want help. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we started with strong conviction. Now, again, you have to hire and recruit the best and the best all have jobs. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we said, okay, well, let's build an amazing culture. Start with that. That's usually not something a company starts with. Usually you hire a bunch of people and then it, people start fighting and it turns into a gigantic mess. Mm -hmm. And then you try to figure out how to improve your culture later. Uh, my co-founder, Tim, in particular, is super passionate about making sure that that's right. And we've spent a lot of time early on to make sure that we can scale. Uh, so, can you comment, sorry, before we get to the second, yeah. what makes for a good culture? Um, so, I mean, there's many different cultures and I have learned many things from hey, many different people. you worked with several very unique, almost famously unique cultures. And some of them I learned what to do and some of them I learned what not to do. Yep. Okay, and so um, we want an inclusive culture. Uh, I believe in like amazing people working together. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen cultures where people, you have amazing people and they're fighting each other. Mm -hmm. I see amazing people and they're told what to do. Mm -hmm. Like thou shalt line up and do what I say. It doesn't matter if it's the right thing, do it, mm -hmm. right? And neither of these is the, and I've seen people that have no direction. They're just kind of floating in different places and they want to be amazing. They just don't know how. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it starts with have a clear vision. Right. And so we have a clear vision of what we're doing. And um, so I kind of grew up at Apple in my engineering life, right? And so a lot of the Apple DNA rubbed off on me. Uh, my co-founder, Tim, also is like a strong product guy. And so what we learned is, you know, I was taught at Apple that you don't work from building cool technology. You don't work from like come up with a cool product and think about the features that you'll have in the big check boxes and stuff like this. Because if you go talk to customers, they don't actually care about your product. They don't care about your technology. What they care about is their problems, mm -hmm. right? And if your product can help solve their problems, well, hey, they might be interested in that, mm -hmm. right? And so if you speak to them about their problems, if you understand and you have compassion, you understand what people are working with, then you can work backwards to building an amazing product. So the vision starts by work, defining the problem. And, and then you can work backwards in solving technology. Got it. And at Apple, like it's, I think, pretty famously said that, you know, for every, you know, there's a hundred no's for every yes. <laughs> I would refine that to say that there's a hundred not yet's for every yes. Yeah. But um, famously, if you go back to the iPhone, for example, right? The iPhone one, I, read, I mean, many people laughed at it because it didn't have 3G, it didn't have copy and paste, right? And then a year later, okay, finally it has 3G, but it still doesn't have copy and paste, it's a joke. Nobody will ever use this product, blah, 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 right? Well, year three, it had copy and paste. and people stop talking about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so and so, being laser focused and having conviction and understanding what the core problems are and giving the team the space to be able to build the right tech is really important. Um, also, I mean, you come back to recruiting, you have to pay well, <laughs> right? So we have to pay industry leading salaries and have good benefits and things like this, that's a big piece. Uh, we're a remote first 
company. And so we have to, uh, uh, so remote first has a very strong set of pros and cons. On the one hand, you can hire people from wherever they are and you can attract amazing talent even if they live in strange places or unusual places. Um, on the other hand, you have time zones. On the other hand, you have like, everybody on the internet will fight if they don't understand each other. And so we've had to learn how to like have a system where we actually fly people in and we get the whole company together periodically. And then we get work groups together and we plan and execute together. And, and so there's like an intimacy to the in-person brainstorming yeah. that you, I guess you lose, but maybe you don't, maybe if you get to know each other well and you trust each other, maybe you can do yeah. that. Well, so when the pandemic first hit, I mean, I'm curious about your experience too. The first thing I missed was having whiteboards. Yeah. Right, and those design discussions where you're like, I can high high intensity work through things, get things done, work through the problem of the day, understand where you're on, figure out and solve the problem, and move forward. Yeah. Um, but we figured out ways to work around that now with you know all these uh, screen sharing and other things like that that we do. The thing I miss now is sitting down at a lunch table with the team. Yeah. The spontaneous things like those the the, the coffee the coffee bar things yeah. and the and the bumping into each other and getting to know people outside of the transactional solve a problem over Zoom <laughs> thing. And I think there's there's just a lot of stuff that um, I'm not an expert at this. I don't know who is. Hopefully, there's some people, but there's stuff that somehow is missing on Zoom. Even with the whiteboard, if you look at that. If you have a room with one person at the whiteboard and then there's like three other people at a table, there's a, first of all, there's a social aspect to that where you're just shooting the shit a little bit, almost like. Yeah, as people uh, are just kind of coming in. and Yeah, that, but also while the, like it's a breakout discussion that happens for like s seconds at a time, maybe an inside joke, or it's yep, like this yep. interesting dynamic that happens that Zoom. And you're bonding, yeah. You're bonding, you're bonding, but through that bonding, you get the excitement. There's certain ideas that are like complete bullshit and you'll see that in the faces of others that you won't see necessarily yeah, on yeah. Zoom. And, and like something, it feels like that should be possible to do without being in person. Well, I but, mean, being in person is a very different thing. I don't. It's but, worth it, but you can't always do it. And so again, we're still learning and yeah. we're all still learning as like humanity with this new reality, right? But um, but what we found is that getting people together, whether it be a team or the whole company or whatever, is worth the expense because people work together and are happier after that. Like it just, it just like there's a massive period of time where you like go out and things start getting frayed, pull people together and then yeah. you realize that we're all working together. We see things the same way. We work through the disagreement or the misunderstanding we're talking about across each other and then you work much better together. And so things like that I think are really quite important. What about uh, people that are kind of specialized in very different aspects of the stack working yeah. together? What, what are some interesting challenges there? Yeah, well, so I mean, I mean, there's lots of interesting people, as you can tell, I'm, yeah. you know, hard to deal with too. <laughs> but- um, You're one of the most lovable people. The, uh, uh, so w one of the, so there's different philosophies in building teams uh, for me. And so some people say, hire 10x programmers, and that's the only thing, that, whatever that means, right? Um, what I believe in is building well-balanced teams, teams that have people that are different in them. Mm -hmm. Like if you have all generals and no troops, mm -hmm. or all troops and no generals, or you have all people that think in one way and not the other way, mm -hmm. what you get is you get a very biased and skewed and weird situation where people end up being unhappy. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to do is I like to build teams of people where they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we do have teams and they're fo focused on like runtime or compiler, GPU or Excel or wh whatever the, the speciality is, but people bring a different take and have a different perspective. And I look for people that complement each other. And particularly if you look at leadership teams and things like this, you don't want everybody thinking the same way. You want people bringing different perspectives and experiences. And so I think that's really important.